Cooler is a member of the Frost Demon Clan that can only be described as far more menacing and even more powerful than his own brother, Lord Frieza. However, to make this what if possible, we'll be using the Cooler continuity from his Dragon Ball Heroes adaptation to guide the story, since Cooler would be going up against Dragon Ball Super God level characters, which would be no fun if we left Cooler at the level he was at during his original movie appearances. And with that in mind, our story begins the moment Future Trunks arrives to dispatch of Frieza and warn the Z Fighters about the impending threat that the androids will bring to the Earth. After Frieza and King Cold's deaths, in space, Sorbet looks onto the planet in absolute terror as he discovers that Lord Frieza and King Cold had both been defeated by whom he can only assume to be the legendary Super Saiyan that they came to Earth looking for in the first place. One of the soldiers from the Frieza Force asks Sorbet if they should notify Lord Cooler for backup. However, with a grim and almost fearful expression, Sorbet declines to have Cooler get involved with the Saiyans as Cooler was a much colder and stone-hearted leader than Frieza and Cooler would likely have their heads for allowing Frieza and his father to perish in such a dishonorable way. And with that, Sorbet would take temporary control of Frieza's army as they leave Earth's orbit since if somebody was powerful enough to defeat King Cold and Lord Frieza at the same time, then their forces stood little to no chance so there was no point in attempting an invasion. And as the Frieza force begins to descend off to the universe, Sorbet begins planning the revival of Frieza using the mysterious wish-seeking orbs known as the Dragon Balls. Not only so that Frieza can take back control of his empire and restore the Frieza force to its former glory, but also because he knows that if Cooler becomes suspicious of Frieza and King Cold's deaths, he would likely invade the Frieza force and, with Sorvay being the new temporary leader, he would likely be one of the first members to be killed by Cooler and his men. However, it had been years since Frieza and Cooler had interacted with each other that anyone knew of, as Cooler had a strong disdain for Frieza, for the fact that Frieza was chosen to take over as the new Emperor of the Frost Demon Clan in King Cold's place. So, rather than answer to Frieza, Cooler decided to choose his own section of the universe where he can reign himself without consequence. Fast forward to many years into the future, Frieza is finally revived by Sorvay and the remaining Frieza Force members as Frieza regains himself slowly remembering his last moments on Earth. Frieza from this point would vow to train, which would allow Frieza to catch up to Son Goku as he did in the original Dragon Ball Super storyline. However, this time Frieza decides that he'll need somebody even stronger than Togoma to train with and this makes the most sense considering how strong his training partner would actually need to be to push Frieza to his next evolution. And who better to do that than somebody from Frieza's own race with experience in the same forms that Frieza had access to and even one form above it. As a side note, this is something that never made any sense to me from Revival of F as Togoma was a random foot soldier of the Frieza force and probably wouldn't have been able to stand up to Frieza in his first form even before his training. So how he was able to push Frieza to achieving his golden form is beyond my ability to create logic and reasoning for. But continuing on with the story, Frieza determines that he knows one being that's currently worthy of his power, who even began his training many years ago, even warning Frieza that due to him being such a soft leader, Frieza's arrogance and lack of care due to his power being so naturally high at birth would one day become the downfall of his reign to which that person would be absolutely correct. This would be none other than Frieza's older brother, Cooler himself, whom Frieza would track down using his ship's scanners, moving in on the location of his long lost brother. Once arriving, Frieza, like Sorbet, would omit the fact that he died to the legendary Super Saiyan, only telling Cooler the basics, which would be that his father perished to a Saiyan warrior and that the Saiyan escaped to a planet called Earth. And Frieza actually creates this lie for a pretty good reason, as showing any signs of weakness to his brother could lead to Cooler attempting to overthrow him for the throne of the Frost Demon Empire. And Frieza had just escaped the afterlife and wasn't trying to be sent back within such a short amount of time. Cooler would inquire about why his brother had come to find him after so many years, and with an angered expression and flaring his key, Cooler would ask if Frieza had finally decided to challenge 
challenge Cooler in order to take his life. However, Frieza, not wanting any conflict, would deny the notion that he's out to kill Cooler. However, he would reveal that he would like to train with Cooler, as a few of the Saiyans that resided on the planet known as Earth had managed to become Super Saiyans and defeat their father. And Frieza would need to increase his power far beyond what it is currently, and possibly even achieve the brand new fifth form transformation that's similar to Cooler's in order to grow to a level where he can actually challenge these Super Saiyans and avenge their father honor and their clan's name is the mightiest in the universe. Cooler recalls the Saiyan pod that he and his men saw escaping planet Vegeta many years ago, which allows Cooler to draw parallels between the Saiyan pod and the name of the planet Earth. Realizing that Frieza's negligence was in fact what put the demon clan's name at risk of being tarnished due to losing to such a pitiful life form, Cooler would curse Frieza for allowing any of the Saiyans to escape in the first place as if Frieza was a more calculated ruler, then something like this would have never happened. However, although Cooler is reluctant to help Frieza initially, the fact that somebody who shared his blood, that being King Cold, was killed by a low-level life form such as the Saiyans is enough to make Cooler angry enough to train with Frieza, as the Frost Demon legacy ending with a defeat by the hands of a Saiyan, which they were known to rule over for so many years, was an absolute embarrassment to their family's name. And so, on a desolate planet, Frieza and Cooler's training would finally begin. In Dragon Ball Heroes, Cooler demonstrates that he has even more potential than Frieza himself, as after seeing Frieza transform into his golden form for the first time, and being taunted by Fu for not having the same transformation, thus being implied to be inferior to his brother, Cooler responds by merely stating that anything his brother could do, he could do as well. As Cooler not only unlocks his golden transformation, however, he also seemingly masters the form, at least in the anime adaptation, so there's very little stamina drain that comes with it, unlike when Frieza first unlocks the form for himself. So we'll say that something similar happens here, as throughout their training, Frieza doesn't unlock a fifth form, but rather his own unique golden transformation instead. You see, Cooler's fifth form was more like a Super Saiyan Grade 2 for the Frost Demon's transformations, which while yes, is technically a new form, in actuality it was more like an evolution of the fourth form, or their base form, with a slight power increase and a more bulked up and mutated appearance than it had before, whereas the Golden Transformation would be like the Super Saiyan 2 version of the Frost Demon's forms, and a true evolution of their power. And the power behind Frieza's new golden form would match this ideology as well, as Cooler's fifth form can't even hold a candle to the power that Frieza possesses now, as Frieza even rivals a Super Saiyan god Goku with Super Saiyan stacked on top of it. As during this training session, Frieza beats down Cooler to the point where he's nearly unconscious. However, Cooler drawing deeper into his power reserves and the bloodline of the Frost Demons flowing through his veins proclaims that anything his brother could achieve, he could also do as well. As Cooler was the older brother after all and believed himself to be far superior to Frieza his entire life, with this very mindset and determination allowing for Cooler to push himself to unlock the golden transformation right then and there, shocking even Frieza, who nervously laughs as the power of Cooler makes him uneasy. And Cooler even takes the golden form a step higher as he combines the power with his fifth form as well, making him insanely strong for where they are currently currently in the Dragon Ball story. Cooler unlocking his golden transformation in this moment should be a lot more earned than it is in Dragon Ball Heroes as well as technically, Frieza and Cooler would have trained together, going all out in sparring matches on an almost daily basis, so it's fair to say that Cooler would have the same form as his brother. It would also be a great time to establish how powerful Cooler is in the story before we get into any of the major fights as well. Before their training, Frieza is of course weaker than Super Saiyan at max power. However, when Cooler fights Goku in the original movie, 
Even having just fought Goku in his base form, Cooler deduces that Goku is enough to defeat his brother, which he hadn't even seen Goku in his Super Saiyan transformation yet. And in his fifth form, you could even calculate that he would be roughly somewhere around 40 times stronger than Frieza at max power, if you calculate him easily being able to overpower Kaioken Goku, and then easily being overpowered by a Super Saiyan Goku. So here, their power levels would just go from there, as they activate their new golden power-ups and I'm gonna say that golden cooler at this point is slightly stronger than Frieza in his regular golden form however cooler can also stack his fifth form on top of even that which could make him as strong as perfected golden Frieza just before the tournament of power and as the two achieve their new golden forms having seen the heights of their already massive potential Frieza and Cooler decide then and there that the two of them should almost certainly be strong enough to defeat the Saiyans and restore the honor of their clan. As Cooler tells Frieza that he'll allow him to go first against the Saiyans when arriving on Earth, however should Frieza fail to bring an end to the Saiyans life, Cooler would immediately intervene and kill Frieza himself as he would not allow the Saiyans to be victorious over yet another one of their clan's members. And fast forward in time, as the Frost Demons arrive on planet Earth, Cooler's ship stays in the sky as Frieza and the entire Frieza force land on Earth. And the entire events of Revival of F go exactly the same as they did before. However, as watching from the window of his ship, eventually Cooler is able to witness the tides of the battle between Goku and Frieza turning, as Goku points out the fact that while Frieza had indeed gotten even more powerful since they last fought, allowing him to maybe even surpass Goku and Vegeta, he lacked one crucial component to his new power that had pretty much decided the match from there. And that component of course would be the fact that Frieza lacked the ability to maintain his stamina, which had already depleted to a level where Frieza could no longer possibly hope to win. As Frieza is beaten down slowly by Goku, Cooler becomes even more angered as he watches from his ship, as emerging from his flying disc, undetected by neither Goku nor the others, who were transfixated on the battle of the gods, Cooler fires a singular death beam, piercing the chest of Goku which nearly travels through Goku's heart. As being caught off guard, Goku immediately reverts to his base form and drops to the ground. Everyone's attention immediately turns to Cooler, as with his arms folded, he announces his disappointment for his brother, proclaiming that he had always knew that his father had made the wrong choice about who should lead the Frost Demon's clan in his absence. As with no effort, Cooler powers up into his golden transformation, as he teleports right in front of Frieza with just one of his hands extended outward. Frieza will look terrified as his brother charges up a massive key attack, ready to take his brother's life for his humiliating failures. However, Frieza's face quickly turns from fear to rage, as he lunges at his brother who, at the same time as Cooler, launches his massive key attack, which engulfs and eventually overpowers the already tired and depleted Lord Frieza. Vegeta and the others are absolutely shocked, as not even Beerus was aware that Frieza's race had other members that were a part of it, as he had only seen Frieza and King Cold himself. However, it would make sense that just like any other life form, Frieza would have had to come from somewhere, so he doesn't dwell on it for too long. Vegeta orders Krillin to give Goku a sensu bean as he launches himself towards Cooler stopping just inches in front of Frieza's brother, and facing him down, sizing up his next opponent, Cooler immediately recognizes and addresses Vegeta as the Prince of Saiyans, yet again, cursing his brother for allowing any trace of the Saiyans to live after the eradication of planet Vegeta. Vegeta, in a calm tone, would note that while Cooler was in fact stronger than Frieza himself, and probably even Kakarot, Vegeta makes the assumption that Cooler probably didn't take the time to perfect his golden form like Frieza did either, and that they probably share the same level of arrogance and stupidity as each other for coming to Earth without being prepared. And while this was an accurate assumption on Vegeta's part, as Cooler did unlock his golden transformation just moments after Frieza, Cooler would laugh to himself as he reveals to Vegeta that while he does probably have the same stamina limitations as his brother, 
This wouldn't matter in their battle, as Kohler had a transformation that goes even beyond his golden form that Vegeta sees now. Vegeta is understandably taken aback by this statement, as Kohler begins to power up, growing his body as massive spikes form around his shoulders, and Kohler reveals his brand new transformation, which looks almost exactly identical to his fifth form, except now, this too, much like his brothers, also shared its golden color. Vegeta, breaking out of his nervous shock, immediately braces himself as he turns Super Saiyan Blue just like Goku, and after taking his Sensu Bean, Goku, looking up at the onward battle, would also turn Super Saiyan Blue, flying in to aid Vegeta. Golden Frieza, despite his stamina limitations, was still no joke when he had access to his full power, and had it not been for his stamina drain, Goku would have naturally eventually lost. So the fact that Cooler was this strong compared to Goku and Vegeta, again likely being as strong as Frieza was before the Tournament of Power, meant that if Goku didn't aid Vegeta, it would have led to a swift and devastating victory for Cooler, and probably the end of the entire planet and life on Earth as they once knew it. As Goku and Vegeta face down Cooler, Cooler would launch himself at the Saiyans, punching both Saiyans in their stomach with such tremendous power that the remaining cliffs nearby shatter, completely collapsing into the raging waters beneath them. As the Saiyans are sent uncontrollably tumbling backwards, Goku tries to charge back in using his instant transmission. However, Cooler easily reacts to this move by Goku, swatting Goku away with his tail with minimal effort. Vegeta, not far behind, would hit Cooler with a flurry of smaller key attacks. However, emerging from the smoke right in front of Vegeta, Cooler would grab onto Vegeta's face, landing another devastating punch to Vegeta's stomach. And then, winding his arm back, he would then throw Vegeta into the air, charging up a massive key blast of his own and firing Vegeta out of the sky with with his key attack. Cooler, having momentarily dispatched both Goku and Frieza, and having proven his dominance over everyone on the battlefield, including his own brother Frieza himself, would begin to charge up his key in a moment of triumph. However, just as he does this, his body begins to shudder as Cooler lets out a painful cry, and the aura that once surrounded his body ceases to burn. Goku and Vegeta look onwards, having recovered as Cooler, now breathing heavily, turns his attention to Goku and Vegeta. Goku calls out the fact that with all of the new power that Cooler had acquired from his fifth form, must be even more taxing to his body than Frieza's golden form was for himself. However, exclaiming that he won't lose, Cooler, charging an attack at Goku, would dive in head first into Goku's chest, landing a devastating blow that would take Goku back into his base form, as Vegeta would try to intervene, however, drawing on even more of his power, Cooler is able to completely mop Vegeta, landing several blows to the Saiyan, eventually pummeling Vegeta onto the ground to the point where he's completely incapacitated. As Cooler would take to the sky, charging a blast that is large enough to destroy the entire planet, Whis, with his usual grin, would ask Beerus if he would really allow Cooler to destroy the Earth like this. And while Beerus states that the fate of the planet was truly none of his concern, they did have some pretty good food there, and he doesn't want to miss out on Bulma's cooking over such a pointless revenge attempt from Frieza. As stepping forward as if Beerus himself is about to intervene in the battle, suddenly he stops in his tracks as buried beneath rubble and rocks, Goku powers up into a Super Saiyan Blue, with his aura being even more powerful and violent than it had ever been before. Goku comes to face Cooler as as Goku states that there's one thing that he wants to try, but he wasn't sure how his body was going to handle it. As powering up, Goku charges a full power Kamehameha wave as Cooler, calling Goku a fool for believing his power could rival his own, launches his key attack down to Earth. As the two energy beams collide with some of the other Z fighters on the battlefield in an attempt to help Goku, 
fire their own Ki Blasted Cooler like they did once before to aid Gohan against Perfected Cell as the energy beam clash ensues. However, Cooler having pushed his form to the peak of its abilities and still not having mastered his stamina, begins to struggle at all the onslaught of the Z Fighters and Goku. As powering up even more, Cooler's blast is slightly overtaking Goku's however, and a surprise shock to everyone including Beerus, Goku pushes a Kaioken times 10 Super Saiyan Blue against Cooler, with the blast finally being able to overcome its beam struggle. As Cooler powers back down to his normal golden form, no longer being able to sustain the fifth form that he had previously, as the blast consumes Cooler's entire body and he's carried away into space. As the threat of Cooler is finally eliminated, or at least that's what the Z Fighters think. Everything in the story would continue as it normally does, however, things would change quite a bit once we get to the Tournament of Power. As looking for powerful enough team members for Universe 7, Frieza's name is brought up by Goku as a possible strong candidate. However, Beerus recalls the fighter Cooler, Frieza's much stronger brother, and states that Cooler could be an even greater asset to the team than Frieza due to his naturally given strength and his additional transformation. Goku agrees and using Whis's staff, Whis would attempt to bring Cooler back, however, there was a slight problem as Cooler was nowhere to be found in the afterlife. This shocks both Goku and Vegeta, as they were sure that Goku's Kamehameha had completely annihilated Cooler for good, which prompts them to wonder where in the universe Cooler could actually be. Using his staff, Whis notates something odd as in space, Whis's staff zeroes in on a planet with a strange mechanical device seemingly consuming the world. As Goku, Vegeta, Beerus, and Whis decide to head to the planet to uncover the mystery of Cooler surviving their encounter and also to recruit Cooler to Universe 7's team. As Goku and Vegeta arrive, they make the terrifying discovery that not only had Cooler managed to survive Goku's final Kamehameha wave, but while in space, Cooler had managed to merge with a strange new piece of alien technology known as the Big Getty Star. And Dragon Ball Heroes, Meta Cooler is able to effortlessly handle Cumber in his perfected Super Saiyan 3 form, completely destroying him in his base and golden meta forms. With this Cumber himself, having received a Zenkai boost in his fight with MUI Goku, and being able to defeat a Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 Vegeta, and even go up against Super Saiyan 4 Capsule Corp Vegito, and Limit Breakers Super Saiyan 4 Broly alike. So with Cooler now having merged with the Big Getty Star in our story, and also revealing that he can stack his golden transformation on top of this as well, we'll stay somewhat true to this level of scaling, saying that Cooler is a Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta level threat and could possibly even slightly be stronger stacking all of his multiple amps and abilities on top of that. One other thing to mention is that since Cooler merges with the Big Getty Star and obtains an almost limitless supply of power, he is also able to consequentially perfect his golden form, eliminating the stamina drain he once had when using the transformation. Similar to how Frieza perfected his golden transformation while training in the afterlife, Cooler proclaiming that it's now over for the Saiyans and rushing in lands two critical blows to both Goku and Vegeta's stomachs at the same time as both Saiyans are immediately incapacitated due to the intense pain. However, before Cooler can finish off Goku or Vegeta, raising his arm and charging another Ki attack, Beerus almost instantaneously appearing behind Cooler would grab onto his arm, telling Cooler that he won't be getting his revenge today, and that Beerus will be needing Cooler to fight on behalf of Universe 7 in the Tournament of Power. Cooler, upon seeing Beerus, has the urge to immediately attack the God of Destruction. However, he hesitates as he remembers faintly that his father used to tell him and Frieza that Beerus was one of the only few people that he should never engage in a battle. And based off the speed that Beerus had just displayed here, and the grip that Beerus had on Cooler's arm that he had yet to been able to break free from, Cooler asks Beerus what would happen if he refuses, to which Beerus simply states that he would destroy Cooler and the Big Getty Star that his life force seemed to be drawing from. The fact that Beerus was able to piece this together alone forces Cooler to cooperate, although he does say that they would regret ordering Cooler around like this one day soon enough. 
As with little time left, Goku and Vegeta would be healed, and Team Universe 7 would need to head to the Tournament of Power. And while we won't recap the entire Tournament of Power in this video, as that would take far too long, a few notable changes I'd like to mention is firstly, Cooler entering the Tournament of Power would immediately be nerfed, as his body would need to be separated from its core in another dimension, which would be the World of Void. You could say that since his brain merged with the source of the big Getty star, that perhaps he wouldn't be nerfed at all. However, this is also a crutch that helps balance out Cooler compared to a lot of the other fighters in the arena. Since I truly do believe that Golden Meta Cooler would be even stronger than Vegito Blue based on everything we see in Dragon Ball Heroes. Speaking of which, I believe that in the scene where Kel loses control, transforming into her Berserker form, it would be none other than Cooler who is able to take down Kel himself. However, Cooler would meet his end as he pushes Topo into achieving his God of Destruction power up, much like Frieza had done in the original anime, which Cooler in his current state of power is just no match for, marking the end of the tournament of power with the same ending that it has in the original story, just minus Frieza and Cooler's assistance in the end. However, moving into the events of the Broly arc, it's questionable on whether or not Broly would be brought to Earth to kill the Saiyans, as you could say that the Dragon Balls are collected. However, Goku and the others arrive, and they should be able to easily stop the revival of Frieza and the Frieza Force from using the Dragon Balls. And without Frieza, I highly doubt that Broly will be brought to fight the Saiyans either. However, an even bigger threat would be brewing in the universe, as in the shadows while Goku and Vegeta deal with the threats like Moreau, Gas, and Granola, Cooler, growing even stronger than Frieza Black was able to achieve in power, is waiting in the depths of the universe as an army of Black Meta Cooler stare off into space pondering their next attack on the Saiyans. Hey there, it's me, Jalen's Theory, and I wanted to add this section of the video after recording the story to fill in some of the blanks that I left during the what if. Firstly, I want to address why I didn't just have Cooler appear after the Namek Saga instead of the revival of F Arc. Well, it's highly likely the Cooler's organization would have just been defeated by the Z Fighters if they appeared on Namek like they were in the movie, which would mean that Cooler's men probably wouldn't have been there to revive revive Cooler in the first place. And with the Frieza Force making no attempt to revive Cooler, let alone even King Cold himself, with even Frieza neglecting to revive his own father, even to this day, many years into Dragon Ball Super, I honestly believe that the only way to realistically add Cooler to the story in a way that he appears in Super as well, is to have Cooler appear in the Dragon Ball Super timeline itself. I also downplayed the power of Frieza and Cooler and the revival of F Arc significantly, as since Frieza had a stronger training partner than Tagoma to grow his strength with that allowed him to actually push his limits, as Cooler would likely rise in power at the same rate if not faster than Frieza, then Frieza should have naturally been a lot stronger than he was in Revival of F after training with Cooler than he was after training with a random soldier, who Frieza could probably blitz in just his first form. And with Cooler already having been naturally stronger than Frieza, once Cooler achieves his regular golden transformation, he would probably be even stronger than that. Let alone with the amp of Cooler having the fifth golden form to stack on top of this as well. And I would be willing to bet that both Frieza and Cooler would be as strong, if not stronger, than Frieza was in Dragon Ball Super, having perfected his golden form just before the Tournament of Power, even as early as Revival of F. But with making Cooler and Frieza this powerful, even if it was more realistic to the story, things would have just been boring from that point, to be honest, as Cooler and Frieza could just kill some. Goku and Vegeta and destroy the planet ending Dragon Ball Super right then and there. That is, of course, if Beerus, the god of destruction, and Whis would allow that to happen. This is also the same mindset that I followed after Cooler merges with the big Getty star, as I believe that he would even be stronger than a fighter as powerful as Vegito Blue, as Meta Cooler would not only be stronger in his base form than he was even in his fifth form, but also pair with this golden meta transformation, which is stronger than his golden fifth form, Cooler would also have zero stamina drain on top of this, and the ability to clone himself thousands of times with zero power difference, which, mind you, could also fight with his new supercharged meta golden cooler form, which again, is stronger than his golden fifth form. 
So you can see why I had to also nerf Cooler's potential in the Tournament of Power, as if we're being completely honest here, if Cooler could carry over the abilities of the Big Getty Star, or even with the source of the Big Getty Star itself, Cooler could have just easily cloned himself hundreds of times, eliminating pretty much every fighter except for Jiren. However, is Jiren really stronger than somebody who is several times stronger than perfected Frieza, being able to multiply themselves a thousand times over? If you really think about it, without giving a crutch like this to the other universes, having a max potential cooler in the tournament of power just wouldn't be a fair fight, so I left it at that. However, after more of Goku and Vegeta's growth is revealed through the Dragon Ball Super manga, and we see how Goku and Vegeta are able to handle the threat of Black Frieza, I'll likely do a part 2 of this what if, as I go over what would happen if Black Metacooler tried to invade Beerus' planet itself using the Big Getty Star. As Cooler does mention to Beerus in my story that he would make him pay one day for treating Cooler as a mere servant.